As part of Black History Every Day, please enjoy this presentation from Ms. Marion Tucker about Sojourner Truth. In the mid-19th century, women rose up intent upon addressing the ills of life forced upon African Americans in the years before slavery was abolished. Out of this group of women, I lift up one whose achievements leading up to her death in 1883 influenced the quality of life for countless African Americans. In 1797, slaves Elizabeth and James Bomfrey gave birth to a daughter, Isabella. Isabella, like her parents, was chattel of the plantation owner. At adulthood, she was described as being six feet tall, spoke Dutch, being strong, and while she never attended church, her mother planted the seeds of a religious life. She was never educated, but she was adept with finances. She could not read. She spoke no English. She learned English, however, at 31 years of age. She became eloquent, could speak extemporaneously, and was queen of the platform. In spite of her circumstances for a woman of her day, she had an uncharacteristic boldness about herself. She was not one to back down from a worthy cause. She was owned by five masters during her lifetime, one of whom was exceptionally abusive because she could not speak English, which made instruction difficult to follow. Another owner promised, due to her good work, emancipation in 1826, one year before New York was to enact its law of emancipation in 1827. Accidentally, in 1826, she got a disease of her hand, which limited her ability to work, an event used by her slave owner to reverse his promise of emancipation in 1826. Following this denial, Isabella told her husband she was leaving. She walked away with her baby daughter, leaving other children behind, only to be followed by her master. He found her. However, his attempts to claim her were denied. Her newfound friends paid the $20 fee for her release, which he accepted. Ratification of New York's Emancipation Law in 1927 rendered her young son Peter a freedman. However, he was sold unlawfully. She sued for custody of her son and won. She became one of the first African American women to go to court and win. For a morn of her day, she was not one to back down from a worthy cause. From 1843 to 1846, she says the Lord directed her to go east. She changed her name from Isabella Bomfrey to Sojourner Truth. Sojourner for all the places she would go and Truth for the messages she would carry as an evangelist. Rebuffed by her race, her skin color questioned, Sojourner continued on her mission, guided by her strength, her faith, and sheer human will, she never faltered. Encountering the women's rights movement in the early 1850s and encouraged by other women leaders, she continued to appear before suffrage gatherings for the rest of her life. One of her most notable achievements was a speech given in 1851 at a woman's convention when it came time for her to speak, she approached the platform and began. Well, children where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the Negroes of the South and the women of the North, all talking about rights, the white man will be in a fix pretty soon. But what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches, and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages, or over mud puddles, or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? 
Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as any man when I could get it and bear the lashes well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all so off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then they talk about this thing in the head. What's this they call it? Intellect. That's it, honey. What's that got to do with women's rights or Negroes' rights? If my cup won't hold but a pint, and yours holds a quart, wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure full? Then that little man in black there, he says women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now they is asking to do it. The men better let them. Obliged to you for hearing me. And now old sojourner ain't got nothing more to say. With these words, she took her seat. I say to you, women of yesterday left broad shoulders upon which we stand. We have a lot to measure up to as the bar was set high in spite of the struggles. We have gone from just being menial laborers to actually being decision makers in meaningful positions. We owe a debt of thanks and gratitude to women such as Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Mary McLeod Bethune, and more recently to Barbara Jordan, Shirley Chisholm, and numerous others. May we never all forget on whose shoulders we stand.